Welcome to my channel, A Woman in Physics. Yes, you are seeing right. I've got my NASA shirt back on, so it's time for a new episode of my little series, Looking Up. Today, I'm not going to talk about a special event that you can watch only at a specific time or a specific place, but rather about a special constellation that you can see solely in the Southern Hemisphere. A couple of years ago, I have been to a conference in Sydney, Australia. And after a very long day of lectures and meetings, I finally stepped out into the night to breathe some fresh air and have a look at the skyline. And when I looked up, I realized that it was the first day without clouds. I could finally see the night sky and I had to look twice in order to realize that I was actually looking at the Southern Cross. The Southern Cross is one of the smaller constellations in the sky, but it is very striking and therefore widely known. It lies in the middle of the Milky Way. The four brightest stars form a cross in the sky, from which Alpha, Beta and Gamma cruises are easily observable binary stars. Historically speaking, the Southern Cross is not one of the 48 classic constellations of antiquity. Back in ancient Greece, the constellation could still be seen from the Mediterranean area, but it was considered to be part of the constellation of Centaur. In the following centuries, due to the precision movement of the Earth, the visible position of the constellation has shifted more to the south. So when the European sailors crossed the southern seas in the 16th century, they became aware of the constellation again. And due to its shape, they saw in it a symbol of Christian faith, leading them. But of course, it was also literally an orientation help leading them, since the vertical axis of the constellation points exactly to the southern celestial pole. And the stars themselves? Well, A. Crux or Alpha Crucis is a triple star, consisting of two extremely bright stars and a slightly weaker one. The three white stars can be seen even using a small telescope. Then there is Beta Crucis, which is also known as Mimosa. It is a variable star, which means that its brightness seems to fluctuate. And the third really bright one, Gamma Crucis, it's a double star, consisting of a very bright red giant star and a weaker one, whitish companion. Due to its wide angular distance, this particular system can already be separated in binoculars. As an additional interesting feature nearby, the so-called coal sack should be mentioned. It lies in the southwest of the Southern Cross and is a dark nebula, that is, a cloud of matter made of gas and dust about 2000 light years away. If you have binoculars at hand, it has interesting structures to gaze at. Just try it. But you may wonder why I think this is so special. Well, if you are lucky to live somewhere on the southern hemisphere, then the constellation is easily visible at practically any time of the year. It is even visible close to the horizon from tropical latitudes of the northern hemisphere for a few hours every night during the northern winter and spring. But if you live like me on the northern hemisphere, you will not be able to see it unless you travel to the south. So this is what I think makes it kind of special. However, here's one final thought. Due to the precession of Earth, the Southern Cross will move closer to the South Pole within the next millennia. But by the year approximately 14,000,
2000, the cross will be visible again for most parts of Europe, Northern Asia and North America. On the other hand, since nobody of us will be around by the year 14,000, be happy if you have the chance to see it. And with this, I would like to thank you for your very kind attention and I hope to see you soon for another episode. Bye!